production underwriting for Ruckus has been made possible in part by the generous contributions from Fred and Lou Hartwig and from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Ruckus, our weekly food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trends of the times. I'm Mike Shannon, joined by the Ruckettes, Kansas City Star editorial writer Yale Abuhaka, star columnist Steve Rose, media and communications consultant Mary O'Halloran, and lobbyist Woody Kozad. If there is one thing we've learned this week, it is this. Don't make Steve Rose angry. In his Sunday column titled, Chris Kobach, So Smart and So Very Dumb, Rose criticizes the Ivy League educated Kansas Secretary of State for many reasons, primarily his views on illegal immigration, calling him a danger to society. Steve also takes issue with Kobach's private law practice and his reaction to a rally held by more than 200 immigration activists in his front yard. Kobach, his wife, and four young daughters were away at the time. Had they been home, here's some of what they would have seen. We've left these shoes here so that Mr. Kobach can maybe try to fill them because these are the shoes of the fathers that he's deported, that have been deported by his laws that he's lobbied for and passed. Kobach separates families. And according to Steve's column, Kobach indicated he would have considered using lethal force to keep protesters at bay. Steve terms that over the top. How so? Well, let me make one thing clear. I think that the people who protested on his private property were completely out of line. It was inappropriate. I know that they went to the Capitol and wanted to protest, and they were told he, that Kobach does all of his immigration work from his home. So that's why they went to his home. But it was still the wrong thing to do. They should have stayed on the sidewalk. And I, okay, so having said that, threatening legal, lethal force and talking about the Second Amendment and getting people all riled up as if he were going, these people were like going to burn his house down. I mean, it was an overreaction and we didn't need to hear from our Secretary of State that he was going to be using lethal force. Well, now my understanding, Steve, and I heard him interviewed and I saw some of the interviews, was that a host on a program, a nationally broadcast program said, this sort of suggests the need for the Second Amendment and he said something like, yeah, I suppose so. Uh, he never, according to him, used force or indicated that he would use force under any circumstances. In fact, that was indicated in one of the Kansas City Star stories about the, uh, the situation. Well, we all read different things then, Mike, because we, I have read that he absolutely used the word lethal force, and Yale's nodding his head yes, yeah. so you've got a witness. We've got two of us well, now. Did you hear him say? Uh, he, I it, will yeah, use. the expansion of, and real quickly, the expansion of that interview was, he talked about it several times about the second need for Second Amendment, and you know I might have had to do something, blah blah blah. I mean, there was well, I wrote a well, similar I, piece to Steve's that got 500 comments because people were mad that I said it, he was well, wrong it, for doing that. So uh, there were, is that. If, if people were out there. pouring into his home, threatening his wife and no, four they young were. daughters, he, uh, I, I said mean, if. No, I'm saying he didn't well, say he would have done exactly, it with these people. And they didn't. He's talking about a possible circumstance. Okay, Steve wrote an excellent column. I think, although actually I disagree with you, Steve, I think they had the perfect right to do what they did. But with respect really? of that, okay. respect of that, I think the, second, the, the, the genuine problem I had with Chris Kobach beyond all the immigration <laughs> stuff is, you're right, he is a smart guy. He could probably be the best secretary of state in this nation promoting voting, getting more people to vote legally and fairly and all that kind of stuff. And yet he spends a lot of his time on other crap and then we come to find out last week and this week, and the Star's Barb Shelley had an editorial on that this week, they can't even implement the voter ID law that Kovac wanted to do last year. Thank God we didn't do it last year because it would have been all messed up where people couldn't even register. He can't even do his own job correctly. Well, it's not the first time, uh, Yale, that he's had problems doing his own job. If you recall, when he was chairman of the Kansas Republican Party, he had to be removed because he couldn't keep the books straight. Steve, you know how over the years I really, I've said often on this show how much I like your writing, how much I think it's very high quality. It's always, always uh, intriguing and uh, wonderfully provocative. You've never said uh, that about me. I'm oh, kind of Yale, hurt now. you just always I'm wanted hurt. more. You want more, <laughs> Yale. Um, I, I just, you know, first of all, this isn't the first time, Mike, that 
a public figure in our area has had protests at their home. If you recall a state legislator named Nancy Brown, who lived in, uh, I think, South Leewood or Overland Park, who for weeks and weeks and weeks in the 1990s, uh, late 80s, uh, the anti-abortion uh, people were in her driveway and on, you know, just weeks and weeks well, of that. Uh, the two, two wrongs don't make another. a right, Mary. Uh, well, have you no, talked to Kobach? Wrong. It wasn't a wrong. Have, have it you was talked, nothing illegal about I've it. Tried, I've, to I've Kobach? tried to call Chris Kobach on several occasions, and he will not return my calls. Once sure. we find out who is calling, I do not get a call back. So I don't have his version of the story. He is writing a version, his version, and it's going to be published in the Kansas City Star of what he has to say in response. And so that's fair. Let's Don't I remember one say. time you bought a gun and made a quite a quite a thing about that. I have a gun. I, ha into, I, I have a gun at home. And you would have used I wouldn't it use, too. But I don't think I'd use would, it on people. No, no, but you use it to protect your home. family. That, that was why you bought it. it right? Of course, I'd use yeah. it to protect my family. Well, but these, I, this wasn't that was the sense I had of what Kobach these people was saying. Were, these people weren't going to burn his house okay. down, Mike. Woody. Well, Steve Collins started out with a, a reference to a, a Yiddish phrase that uh, it, he, he tried to give me earlier and couldn't quite get all of it out. Uh, that meant smart, 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 and in the end, dumb. Um, I, I read this column. And you call Kobach incredibly stupid. He has a bloated ego. He is blinded by prejudice. He is unbelievably ambitious. And he's simmering pot of hostility. And after having said all these hateful things, he calls him mean-spirited. There's a Yiddish word for that, and it's chutzpah. To heap this kind of a program on somebody and then call him mean-spirited. This is a mean-spirited column. There's very little in it that's, that's, you know, that con constitutes as... Uh, you know, like factual things, like, okay, so he moonlights uh, as a lawyer. That's one factual assertion. The other one is that he has a horrible track record getting those laws upheld. In fact, two of them have been upheld. A couple of them have been partly, you know, par important parts have been struck down. Others have been left in place. Okay. That isn't a horrible track record. Uh, this is, the, the tone of the column, I'll just be frank, is really vicious. I, 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 you disagree with the guy, we, we, but we, we, those words? We're going to wow. end this with another expression, oy vey. Oy vey. Okay. <laughs> it was a disappointing moment for those who take pride in the remarkable progress made in Kansas City, Kansas, and Wyandotte County government. Two finalists for a vacant county commission seat, Don Budd and Nathan Barnes, were both allegedly delinquent in paying business taxes. Sitting commissioners did not find that disqualifying, but then could not decide which one to appoint. The commissioners voted by secret ballots, results of which were read aloud by the clerk. Attention, county commissioners, KCK may be God's country, but it's not the Vatican. This appears to be quite a challenge to the new mayor, Mark Holland, whose commission seat remains unfilled. So, Mary, uh, will this be a significant early test of Holland's leadership skills? Oh, we've always been happy that Wyandotte County isn't the Vatican. <laughs> There's a certain advantages to that. Um, well, sure, everything, every uh, a major event in a new leader's uh, uh, administration is to some degree a test. But I think, I think the budget that he will present on the 14th of July is, is the first big major uh, uh, public policy event, and f especially for the people of Wyandotte County who have an interest in it. How, you know, this, this, this interesting situation where he, there's an impasse, his empty seat is there, and it's got to be filled by someone. So there's an impasse. They conducted the voting uh, without telling people immediately who cast the vote, but it was open to the public. You could get the results right there and, and find out who voted for whom or figure it out. Uh, you know, it's well, not the it, first it, time that this has happened, Mike. If I could just tell you a little history about this. Well. Uh, Carol Marinovich, when she was first elected, in 1995, prior to the major reforms creating the unified government, had an impasse on her council. And uh, she, uh, she is very candid. I, I chatted, happened to chat with her yesterday, and she said uh, um, that it was an interesting part of her start, too. And, and you see where her mayoral uh, life ended up Should being, citizens so. have to guess uh, how, their commissioners voted, how their commissioners voted on who should fill the vacant seat? No. Comma, and the, those two finalist candidates should be thrown out, and we should start over. I, I, I mean, you, to have people who owe taxes in Wyandotte County, as it's now been found, yeah. in the one of, if not the highest taxing places in the area, does not give me 
confidence, if I were a not County resident, that they're really going to work for the betterment of the county. And, you know, Nathan Barnes has been there forever, so it's not like, you know, you're going to get somebody he new. Came, and He came in third in the mayor's well, race. Well, yeah, but, you know, let's get, uh, frankly, let's get somebody new yeah. in there. It's well, time they, for somebody they, new. They don't, have to, Budd Budd they don't have to audition people like either. they did. They had 18 people who wanted to be on the commission. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to do that. There. They can just appoint someone, can they not? Well, I, I'd hope get so. Yeah. Why can't process? they just get together and get some people, you know, decide that? But but the impasse, I would agree with Mary, it or you, I guess it is uh, an early test yeah. for Mark Hall and the and the image of Wynot County. Well, it's not what also. This is about ethics too. You know, he he voted to keep it at, at an impasse because not satisfied with with a uh, divided uh, council, and he uh, he chose to to make it an even vote. And just wait this thing out a bit and see how see how it works out. Carol Marinovich, it worked out fine. Well, and you I can be been... sure one thing: the next candidates will be well vetted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, well. And they're going to know. Uh, well, let's exactly. hope there are next well, candidates. Yeah. And I, I believe Holland voted for Barnes and he Murgia, did vote for Barnes. That's and, correct. And Murgia, who uh, ran against him in the mayor's race, voted for Bud. And by the way, I saw this morning on the Wyandotte yes. County News website and yeah. uh, Tony's Kansas City website that Ms. Murgia is being named to the Kansas Board of Regents by, by her Governor buddy, Brownback. Sam and Brownback. you may recall during the campaign there was speculation that uh, she was being supported by some Republican groups campaign, and by she Governor Brownback. She maintained herself as a Democrat, and uh, this, uh, this is a whole well, new... I wish I had voted for her. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right, we've got to go on. We now know that downtown Kansas City lost 16,000 jobs between 2001 and 2011, despite the millions of dollars for development invested by taxpayers. And now Yale reports that despite the millions of taxpayers' dollars spent on the Area Transportation Authority to promote riding the bus, Ridership remains stagnant. 83% of people drove to work by themselves in 2011, leading Yale to conclude in a recent column, local motorists still love to drive alone despite high gas prices and other choices available. So Yale, Yale do you think Kansas City area residents are just simply hermits? I'm not hermits, but if they go anywhere, they go in their cars. Um, uh, this report is one of those um, ones that statistical nerds like me love to pour over. Because they're actual, it's actual data, it's accumulated there, and you don't necessarily have the um, uh, pull and tug of like the transit proponents. And again, I rode the bus for the first 12 years of here, so I'm not anti transit. But to hear transit proponents talk, oh, we're going to have the streetcar. Oh, we got the bikes on the street now. Oh, we've got more trails there, which by the way, I love trails. Um, oh, we're going to have, uh, you know, the ATA is getting $20 million a year more. Just think how many more people will be using transit. Well, the number goes like this on transit because so many people get around here by car. That's why we're going to have that $600 million gateway to hell out in Johnson County where they're going to expand 435, I-35, and K-10 because people want to drive their cars. Well, Again, good, think, bad, or indifferent, well, they are driving their cars. You, yes, Steve? How, how can you argue about building the roads because that people I'd are using? Because I'd rather spend the money you, that, on you, transit try to encourage them to do it, but you're right, they're not going to do that because we won't make the major push on transit. We will not make a major they push can, in They can run 100 buses and it won't make any difference. You'll see two in Johnson County. In Johnson gonna, County, You're yeah. going to see two people on a bus. <laughs> and that's the way it is. That's the way it's always yeah, been. I'm and that's the way it's going to be. But that's the <laughs> way it's always been because Johnson County has always been alive when, when gas is cheap. And, and if you think it's always going to be, as, and I don't think it's cheap right now, but it has been so cheap from the 1950s to the present, give or take some ups and downs of, of a couple of years or parts of years. And trust me, if gas goes to $5 or $6 a gallon, you'll see what you saw in this town in, was it Yale 9, 2009 or 11, where yeah. we had the buses coming from South uh, Overland Park full downtown Kansas City. And all kinds of people talking about innovative new bus routes. So. Uh, you're right. Until we really do it, Yale, until we do it right, it'll be cars. Well, and Woody, course, I think you've argued before people drive in Kansas City in the Kansas City area largely because it's convenient and you can get from one place to another in a relatively short period of time. In the rush hour, 90% of the cars traveling in this community 
are riding on roads that are 90% paid for by the federal government with federal tax dollars. Mm -hmm. The other 10%, most of it's paid by people who don't live in the metro area. We get these high, this state and interstate highway system, which is 90% of our rush hour traffic. And it's a great deal for us. And we have more miles of it per person mm -hmm. than any other metropolitan area in the country. And we act accordingly because we don't have a serious rush hour here. We don't have a serious traffic problem. And Pache, Yale, we don't have a serious pollution problem. This is not L.A. And people get in their cars and drive. And if they want to be antisocial and drive one to a car, well, <laughs> fine. I but. saw a new word to me in one of the stories about bikes in Kansas City. Uh -huh. Sharrows, uh, yeah, uh, sharing lanes right. for cars and mm -hmm. bicycles. Yeah, and th I mean, I think this is one of those things that's <laughs> really irritating motorists. Oh, yeah. Frankly, oh, irritating. is is they got to share the road with bicyclists. Now they're, again, they're, they're, I'm not one of them. They're, okay? they're doing twi do twelve miles of bike lanes right. in Kansas City. But you know, th there's a difference here. I mean, bike lane to bicyclists is they have that little two or three foot wide lane, and you see it in many cities and in part of Kansas City. The other one where it says share the road and it has, you know, a bicyclist is actually in the road with the cars, but, you know, the, they can go ahead of a car and be in the same lane and the car will have to be going 18 miles an hour or 22 miles an hour unless the bike kind of, you know, go, goes you know off the I, side. And that's what, I, I just say real quick, that's what irritates motors, but yeah. darn it. You know, it what, is supposed to be shared. Take one of your columns and print the rules for what you're supposed to do when the bicyclist is two feet in front of you uh -huh. and you can't figure out and the lane's not that and you're, there's some right. car in the left lane and you, how, how are you supposed to go past that bicycle and you can't slow down. I mean, take one of your columns and put yeah. the rules in it. Nobody knows the rules. That's a, that's really a good don't. point. Get, get on that for next week. Yes, ma'am. And yes, maybe sir. you'll write a column as admirable as some of Steve's. Yes. Mary's uh, I will admirable. try. It's my lifelong right. ambition. That would be helpful. Okay, Missouri U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill says she's supporting Hillary Clinton for president in 2016. Does that mean the former the first lady, senator, and secretary of state is running? Can she resist? A major supporter and fundraiser of Kansas Governor Sam Brownback says the incumbent will seek a second term. Has there been doubt? Let's quickly cover both. First, how does Brownback sell voters on a second term, Woody? Well, I happen to know the answer. I suspected you would. I think he's going to say I came into office facing a $500 million projected deficit, and we now have a projected surplus. Uh, so we've turned it around. We've... Uh, We've cut your taxes, and guess what? State spending, state spending as opposed to federal stimulus spending on K through 12 education, has gone up every year he's been in office. Uh, contrary to the disaster predicted by uh, a lot of people sitting in this space right now, um, and so 98% of Kansans work for companies that have fewer than 100 employers, employees. They have cut taxes by trying to attract people like companies like that, that that are the kind of companies that will locate in Kansas apparently and that employ 98 percent of their people. They are, uh, their, their unemployment rate is one of the better unemployment rates in the country. Uh, they're, before he came into office and for decades now, just like Missouri and the whole region, they have been a state in decline, population, job growth, so on. And he's doing something dramatic to he, try and say turn he's that turned around. it around. He's yeah, trying. That the he's economy doing is something. Wrong, he's no. the first no. governor to try. Don't know how this is going to play That's out. That's right. Exactly. Until well after the re-election of Sam Brownback, the, it's going to hit the fan. Two years, three years, four years after that point, when the state is completely broke and the budget's going to get completely slashed in areas that the average person does not want slash. They want government in certain parts of their lives. And the, the, right now, Sam Brownback can run on a tax cut, and he'll win based on that tax cut, and then we'll have to wait for the other shoe to drop. Well, but now, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, you know, one of the major bond rating agencies downgraded Kansas, $200 million of Kansas bonds, saying, essentially, and I read this, there's no guarantee they can the state is going to be solvent enough in case there's some problem with the bonds to pay it. That's a pretty bad thing when it's happening now, and this is before, as you know, I think as Woody acknowledges and I acknowledge, before you really know how it's all going to turn out. And there's certainly hope from the, I, I've said this before, 
I don't wish the state of Kansas withers up and die or looks like Mississippi or Arkansas in three or four years with its state services and all that kind of stuff, educational. I don't really want that. I think it is going to happen when you take away so much tax money. But the, that bond rating agency thing yesterday was pretty amazing because they don't usually, you know, just willy kneel and do stuff for that. And they had a very specific reason. We do not think they will have enough money uh, okay. to back these up. What, what do we make of Senator McCaskill with this early endorsement of Hillary Clinton? What, what's in it for Senator McCaskill, if anything? Hmm. Well, Kraski implied that she was trying to get right with Clintons. Hillary Clinton and yeah. Clintons because there was a good chance that Hillary would be the nominee. And her uh, support of Barack and Obama. she supported Obama, Obama early. Uh, and in the uh, in the primaries last time in, in 08. Yeah. Uh, I think the Democrats are also worried about the possibility of Joe Biden for president, uh, and they ought to be. Um, Kraski said, or, or McCaskill said, uh, McCaskill, Senator McCaskill said that her record as Secretary of State was, of course, proved she was going to make a great president. I think the worst thing that's going to happen to her if she runs is how American foreign policy has uh, proceeded while she was Secretary of State. I don't think that's going to be her big ringing endorsement. But I think McCaskill's trying to do what a lot of Democrats are trying to do. Okay. Hillary, please run. So uh, quickly, uh, you think she'll run? And I know we don't know at this point, but what's your, what's your sense? I think she'll run, and I hope she's not the nominee. Steve? I think she's going to run, and I think she's going to win. <laughs> Mary, I... Well, I assume you think she she's is going to running. Run. I mean, it's not a matter of thinking. She's, it's actually, she started uh, her uh, blog, her website. She is out of her rest period. She is raising money. She's hiring people. And she is collecting the uh, endorsements of people like Claire McCaskill, who now now is going the right direction in the early Democratic primaries. If there is a Can primary. Me? Uh, yeah, Woody, what do you think? I don't know if she's going to run because I, her health is not good. So I'm not quite mm -hmm. so positive. Mm -hmm. I know she wants, I think she wants yeah, her. I, I'm well, not at all sure she's going to wind up. This will be her less, last best chance, I would right. think. Well, this, oh, yeah. this I mean, is it. If it's, That's right. if it's not in 2016, I don't yeah. know when well, it will be. Well, she has 80% of the Democratic support. All right, now it's time for Roast and Toast, where we cheer or jeer, praise or pan people and events in the news. We start tonight with Mary. Julia Irene Kaufman has made contributions to this city over the years that are astounding and now are being enjoyed by thousands of people at the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts. But this week, once again, she deserves a toast of the highest order for her commitment of $20 million from the Muriel Kaufman Foundation to support the movement of the University of Missouri's Conservatory of Music and Dance down to the center of Kansas City. And it was kicked off yesterday there. And again, big, high marks to Jim Heater and everybody at the uh, Chamber of Commerce. But Julia Irene Kaufman, toast to you. Thank you for, again, taking the leadership in Kansas City. Uh, this is a reluctant roast to all the NHL and NBA fans out there who keep saying, we've got to have a professional team at Sprint Center. No, we don't. <laughs> Uh, the Sprint Center is financially successful. We don't need a pro team there for Kansas City to have a major league image. We already have three major league teams. And frankly, we don't have enough passionate sports, hockey, and basketball fans in this town to make it a go. So I hope we do not get a team at Sprint Center. Uh, I'm going to hold this up. You can't read it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but these are people, groups, that testified on the tax cut bill in the Missouri Senate. All these groups testified for, that's most of the business groups in the state. Down here are all the groups that testified against the tax cut. Every one of them lives off of your tax dollars. Oh, except one. The Civic Council of Greater Kansas City is down here with the tax consumers. What the hell are they doing on that list? Who's running that place? The answer is somebody who doesn't care about the business atmosphere in the state of Missouri. That's who. I'd like to roast Speaker of the House, Kansas Speaker, Ray Merrick, who is from Stillwell, Kansas, who has a vendetta against the University of Kansas. And just a couple of days ago in the Lawrence Journal world, he let out with a tirade against the university and going after it in such a way that you think he's going to want more cuts than even before. I would suggest anyone who lives in his district who is from KU or cares anything about KU to let him know to lay off of KU. 
And finally, a toast to former President George W. Bush, who in a recent Gallup poll got a 49% approval rating, his highest since 2005. The increase <laughs> is likely the result of growing public awareness that Bush's successor, who once assailed his policies in the war on terror, has not only adopted them, he has expanded them. President Bush must be pleased. After all, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And that's Ruckus for this week. We're away next week because of the 4th of July holiday, but we return on July the 11th. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us, and good night. Production underwriting for Ruckus has been made possible in part by the generous contributions from Fred and Lou Hartwig and from viewers like you. Thank you.